glide is all about energy management. So when we're flying normally, we want to be as efficient as possible. That's why we have nice long wings, we have low aspect ratio, we want to be, you know, 30 to 1, 32 to 1. That's fantastic when flying around, but when we're on land, yeah. it, it becomes a bit interesting because you end up going halfway down you the airfield. all the way down. Yeah, so we can use the air brakes to actually, if you think about it, as we open them, air struggles to go over the wing. So we start to basically stop that bit of wing working. So our wings get shorter for all intents and purposes. We also, you create drag. You've got some big doors out the wing. So actually, when we're on approach, and it's like a powered aeroplane, it's not a problem, it's the same sort of thing. Think of that as your throttle. So what you do is if you nail a speed, so 60 knots we'll say, okay. if you nail 60, 60 knots, what you'll see is there'll be a reference point, something on the ground, you call it an aiming point, we call it a reference point, something on the ground. At some point that will start going below the nose. So don't, don't panic and put the nose down and aim for it. Just let it start to go down. If we then open the air brakes to at least half or two thirds, which gives us enough drag, you've just caused a load of drag, haven't you? So what's going to happen is you're going to have to put the nose down to keep 60 knots on. Right. So actually what happens is you end up flying this profile all the way down without touching about with these, just maintaining 60 knots all the way till you get near the ground. And as you get near the ground, Again, one thing you, you will have to calibrate yourself to is your bottom's not far off the ground, so you've not got an undercarriage. Hmm. So you'll be trying to probably round oh, yeah. it out a bit yeah. earlier. So I'll help you, but basically as you get nearer the ground, start to round it out, and then your job is not to land it. So you're going to keep it off the ground as long as you can, and eventually she'll settle on the ground and she'll stop. And the reason we teach that is because if you approach with the right amount of air brake, you've got lots of stability with the drag, You've also got um, you sort of best best sort of um, angle. You've still got a little bit to go and ease away because you close close or open the air brakes. As you land, as you hold it off, you're getting rid of every bit of energy you've got. So when you do land, you couldn't get this aeroplane back in the sky if you tried. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So the reason again we teach that is because if we're teaching to go into fields and things, I want you going over a tree. At this, you know, if there's a tree in the end of the field, you can go into the field like that at a steep mm -hmm. angle where a lot of guys will, will come in on a shallow in approach and they'll go, oh, there's a tree in front of me now and start panicking. Okay. And then you close your air brakes, so you hip over the tree and then you're actually landing with, and if you have, don't have your air brakes open, you're landing with lots of energy and they wonder why they go out at the end of the field. So this actually is good for all your power failures, all the stuff you do, all that sort of stuff. It's a good practice to get into. So that, that's basically what we can do. So I started to learn how to fly at 12. I soloed when I was 16, which was the minimum age, so I soloed on my birthday. And I was an instructor very quickly at 17. I could take up passengers um, for trial flights. Um, went into cross-country flying, that was really where my passion was, which is where you go and fly a distance away from the airfield. Um, went very quickly into competitions at 18, um, started doing competition flying, and it was my dream to fly in the world. And I flew for the British team in 2011, and um, we went over to Sweden, and I competed there, and I came eighth. Uh, the, the figures are that there's 7% of women in gliding um, only, 5% of those, 5% um, of instructors are female, so the numbers are low. Um, I'm actually actively involved in the women gliding um, to help, you know, build development in the country. Um, so we do lots of things on social media. This week um, I'm hosting, or we're hosting a development week where women can come and fly in two-seaters and be shown what cross-country is, that there's more to gliding than just going solo. Um, and you know how you can have your own glider, have your own kit, what you need to do and how you can get the most out of the sport and that obviously there's a good portion of ladies here this week so it's nice to kind of build that community because when people are just at individual clubs there aren't, all, there aren't many females around so it's nice to bring everybody together. I just got to know some of the uh, glider club kids. Yeah, so, so the, the young girl Young lady, young yeah, girl, Phoebe. who was helping me. She's 15. Yeah, oh yeah. And she's soloing here at the field. And what's funny is that she said they just changed the rules that you have to be 16, but she's grandfathered in. Can you say grandfathered when they're 14? Yeah, exactly. Or 15? <laughs> yeah, I think in this case it applies. 
Yeah, I started when I was 14 on September the 1st of the last year, yeah. Okay, and what made you decide to get into aviation at such a young age? Um, when I was really young, I went to the motor museum, oh, sorry, the plane museum at Coventry, and I just loved it from there on. And then my parents took me to Bruntingthorpe, which is just over there, to see the jets, and I just really loved it from that point, yeah. Are you going to do more in aviation? What's your plans? Um, I want to become a bush pilot in Africa and fly in the bush and help people who need help there. So, yeah. Um, she's amazing. She's great. Like, I love to see the young passion in gliding. Um, it just reminds me of myself when I was younger. <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't matter the environment. You just, you just come because you really enjoy the sport um, and the actual sensation when you're in the air. Um, it's incredible. It's like nothing... It's not even like flying. It's a totally different flying from even flying that most people think of flying. So the Women's Worlds is actually ha being hosted by this gliding club, Husbands Bosworth, the gliding centre, in August. It starts on, on the 10th of August. We've got a few days practice and then the competition starts on the 13th of August and runs until the 27th of August. So it's a two week competition and we hopefully, if the weather's good, we'll fly every day or most days that we can fly. Each day we have weather and a task set. So it could be 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, even up to 500 kilometers. And essentially it's the fastest person round wins. Um, it's divided into three classes. So gliders are categorized by their uh, ability. They're handicapped in some of the classes. Um, so to e create a more even playing field between the pilots and the the kind of the most points through the competition wins so each day you get the winner gets the most points and they're tallied up over the week and whoever has the most points wins the competition so i'd love to see more of women knowing as well that that, that community exists um, and also you know worldwide i mean there's so many women in other countries that um, also have i guess are facing similar issues but it's trying to bring everyone together and even though we're kind of you know countries apart or clubs apart that actually we can reach out and we can kind of share the passion and, and connect in that way. So yeah, I mean more women is definitely my ideal. That gliding, I knew I was going to love it but uh, oh my goodness. What a fun positive experience. I highly recommend gliders for anybody wanting to improve their piloting skills. And I'd like to thank the gliding center here outside of Leicester in the United Kingdom. For all of our fans out in the United Kingdom, come out here and fly some gliders. They are awesome people. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you to the fans that came out and saw us today. We had a really great day just interacting with people and getting to know the, the locals. It was so much fun. Can't say enough good about them. And can't say enough good about our sponsors, Flying Eyes, who has made this trip possible with you know these frames that are unbelievable under headsets. And also Colton Mortgage, uh, Colton taking off. If you've got that residential mortgage need, run by a pilot. And also Marshall Security Service, also run by a pilot. Seems like we're having a theme here. Yeah, something about pilots, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so let's support our pilot community. We thank you guys for supporting us and we'll see you next time. On taking off. <laughs>